This is how to make a copy of a sheet and retain sheet level protections. Now what this comes from, when I started making these videos, and one of the first ones I made four years ago was how to make a copy of a sheet with protections, but that was range protections. So here's the sheet that was from there. Let's go to data, protect sheets and ranges. And here we can see that the range B2 through C10 is protected. Almost immediately, I started getting comments asking how to do the same thing, but for sheet level protections. And here I am, four years later, finally getting to that. So I've made a new spreadsheet here. And this spreadsheet, data, protect sheets and ranges, has sheet level protections. So here's what range protections look like, where it has a range that's protected. And here's what sheet level protections look like with exceptions. So this means that anyone can edit F2 through H2, and anyone can edit F4 through H4, but nothing else. And what we want to do is make a copy of the template, one, two, three, four, etc., and have this same protection on those copied sheets. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the script from the original spreadsheet, and we can see what needs changed. Extensions, app script, and we'll also up extensions app script on the new spreadsheet. Don't know why it always comes up with that annoying little thing. All right, I don't want the menu one right now. Let's br just bring over the function itself. So let's go through this. Starting here at the top, get the spreadsheet, get the template sheet, get range protections, make a copy of the template sheet, protections, well, make a variable called P, and then for each protection in the protections, add the same protection to the new sheet. The way this is done for a range protection is getting the A1 notation of that range and applying it to the new sheet because the range itself doesn't work because the range also includes the sheet name and other minute differences that we need to get over. So we're just going to get the A1 notation, and pass that into protection, that works. And then this part here is just getting rid of the editors so that it's actually protected against them, right? So let's go ahead and start by changing this from range protection to sheet protection. And when I run this, first thing it's going to do is ask for permissions. Going to give it permission to run as my account. Advanced, go to project, allow. And then it's going to run. And it's going to die. <laughs> because here, it's the way this one is written for range protections. We're going to have to rewrite this whole for loop to actually work properly in the sheet protections rather than the range protections. So what we want to do in the in the range protections, it was protect it was getting each range and protecting it. Right? For the sheet protections, what we actually want to do is set the sheet protections. So here it made a copy of the sheet, but it wasn't able to get to any part of protecting it. We want to protect the entire sheet and then unprotect all of the areas that should be unprotected. So instead of getting the ranges and protecting them, we're going to protect everything, get the ranges, and unprotect them. So the way we're going to do that is instead of just letting this P be undefined, we're actually going to define it as we create it. So that P equals n sheet dot protect. Right, and that's going to That can protect the sheet except by the users. Perfect. That's what we want. So on this, on the old one, we said new sheet dot get range dot protect. This time we're going to say new sheet dot protect. Okay. Now what I also want is to get the unprotected ranges. So in this 
prot constant we made up here. Let's just look at what we have inside of it. It's an array, so I'm going to look at the first instance and see what it gives me. Get unprotected ranges. That's what we're going to want. So that's going to be, you know, let's go ahead and call that not get protections. What should we call that? Let unprotect. Now that's going to again create an array. So if I do unprotect, these are all array functions. But if I look at the first value inside of unprotect, now I have things that can actually work. Right, so unprotect zero dot get range. Do I need to get a range? Oh, we don't need to get a range. It already comes as a range. Oh, that makes sense. Get unprotected ranges. So the very first one is going to be a range. So we can just get a one notation. That's going to be super useful. Let's go ahead and log that and just see what we see in there. And I'm going to comment all of this out so that for loop doesn't run. Excellent. So right now, all that this should do is create a copy of the template sheet, name it properly, protect that new sheet, and get me the A1 notation of the first unprotected range. So if we come here, that's actually exactly what it did. So here, it made a copy of the template sheet. It gave it sheet level notations. And there are no unprotected ranges so far. That's actually a really good start. Let's look here. And it said that the first unprotected range has A1 notation F2 through H2, which would be F2 through H2. Exactly what we want. So instead of this for loop let's still go ahead and open this up for let i in unprotect we can get rid of all of this p dot set unprotected ranges unprotect i Great, so this is going to protect the sheet, get all of the unprotected ranges, and then we're gonna loop through all of the unprotected ranges and set unprotected ranges. We don't need that logger there. So let's run this again, and it should create sheet three. Ooh, exception, the parameters spreadsheet app dot range don't match the method signature for spreadsheet app dot protection dot set unprotected ranges. So let's see what the signature is supposed to be p dot set unprotected ranges move this down enough that we can actually read it set unprotected ranges wants a array of ranges oh that is different so we can't just pass it each range we actually need to uh, pass it an array that contains all of the ranges and that's how it's using it down here so in their example one, they declared the sheet, they protected the sheet, and the unprotected is sheet.getRange, B2 through C5. And then they said protection, so this constant here, protection.setUnprotectedRanges, and see how they have the square brackets around unprotected? They're passing in an array. That's cool. All right, so for that then, what happens because unprotect is an array. So what happens if we just pass unprotect back up into protection? P dot set unprotected ranges, unprotect. That's already an array. Comment this out, save it, run it again. Specified range must be part of the sheet. Okay, this is where I was saying that on the old one, we had to get the A1 notation because the range itself, just the range object, 
includes the fact that it's part of a different sheet. So what this right here is trying to do is set template F2 through H2 as an unprotected range of the protection on sheet four. That's not going to work. I hope that made sense. So in unprotect, there are two ranges. And it's easy for us to say, well, the ranges are F2 through H2 and F4 through H4, but that's not actually the case. The ranges are template F2 through H2 and template F4 through H4. So in order to get this unprotected properly, we can't just pass it the same ranges because these ranges include the fact that they are part of template. So we need to get the A1 notation information out of each of the ranges in unprotect. Okay. So I actually still want this array, this for loop, not this array. What am I saying? And we're going to do let ranges equals, and I'm going to just start with a array, an empty array. Now for let I in unprotect, which is just going to be for each thing in the array called unprotect, I'm going to push into ranges, ranges dot push, which is move something at to into the end of the array. Unprotect I dot get a one notation. Great. Now let's move P dot set unprotected ranges to the bottom. So now this should make a copy of the sheet, protect the sheet, get all the unprotected ranges from the protection, make a new array called ranges. And then for each thing in the unprotect array, push the a one notation of that range into our ranges variable and then set those all back up into p dot set unprotected ranges. Let's try that. Specified range must be part of the sheet. Excuse me. What's going on? What's going on is you can't just pass a one notation. Let's look again. P dot set unprotected ranges. The way they're doing it, const unprotected equals sheet dot get range b2 through c5, and then it's passing that as an array into set unprotected ranges. This is the part we're missing right now. We have the a1 notation. What we need is to actually get the range, not just the notation. So what we need to do here is ranges dot push new sheet dot get range unprotect i dot get a one notation so now it's actually going to get the range matching that a one notation into on that new sheet put that into our ranges array and then we can do that run We don't have anything logging, nothing failed. So let's go look at six. All right, six has a sheet level protection that says that everything can be edited except, well, everything is protected except F2 through H2 and F4 through H4. F4 through F2 through F2, F4 through H4. That is exactly what we are looking for. So. How we got here, this one, we got all the range protections and then we moved each range protection onto the new sheet. That was pretty simple. For this new one, we made a sheet protection. We made a new sheet. We made sheet protections. We got all of the unprotected ranges and then we had to get the matching ranges on the new sheet, put that into an array and then 
unprotect those ranges on the new sheet. That looks prettier. That's actually, I think, a bit shorter. Love it. And here we can see it did protect it properly. There actually is a really cool syntax method to do this in a single line using some array methods. I'm gonna go ahead and show you that. The for loop method, I think, is much simpler to understand, but there are array functions and arrow functions that can be super, super powerful. So here's one of them, unprotect.map. And what map does, map method calls the callback function one time for each element in the array calls a defined callback function on each element of an array and returns an array that contains the results. So what that means is using dot map on an array runs through each element in the array and does something to it. We can define whatever that something is as long as we can contain it within a function. That means that most for loops operating over an array can be condensed into a dot map or a dot reduce function reduce calls to specify callback function for all the elements in an array and then returns an accumulated result. So they're, they're different. Dot map goes over each instance and then reduce, also, you'll also see sometimes goes over all of the elements and returns an accumulated value at the end. We're going to use map. Right, so it's mapping one in each element to something else based on a function, right? So the way we're going to do this, we're going to do E for element. Arrow function. So for each element in the array, unprotect, give me the new sheet dot get range E dot get a one notation. And we're just going to say let ranges equals. So I'm going to clear out all of this. Actually, I'm just going to show you two ways that this works. And I'm just going to log ranges. So right now we're not doing the me map method. We're just doing the for loop method. Run this and it returns two ranges. Woo! <laughs> that wasn't as helpful as I expected. All right. For let i in ranges log There we go. So this is showing me both of the A1 notations. And then if we get rid of the for loop version and instead use the map version, save it, run it, we actually get the exact same output. So this one is saying for each element in the array, which is the same as here for let I and unprotect, do convert it into is really what it's saying. Convert e into new sheet dot get range e the element dot get a one notation both ways work i like the readability of this but actually this the map version can become more readable but as i'm as learning i think that this version the for loop version is much more legible much more readable so I'm going to go ahead and leave the map version in here so that that can be worked with as well, but I have it commented out so it's not actually running, right? Run this one more time, just prove it's working mostly to myself. So you should be able to see real quick, it made a copy of template, renamed it, protected it, and there it is. Ah, love it so much. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. If so, please do all the socially stuff, like, subscribe, share. If you need help getting this script or this concept working on your spreadsheet, go ahead and drop a comment. I do try to stay active in the comments here. You can also connect with me on email, LinkedIn, X, 
I'm active on the Google Product Expert forums. And if you do have a larger project you need help with, I am available for consultations as well.